Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place for free, which you can use right from your phone, computer, or even tablet. Creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. They'll distribute your podcast for you so you can use it can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Paperback Romance Book Club. I am your host, Melissa. In this podcast, we will be talking about all things romance novels, all the genres that are involved, all the categories, the subcategories, the fan fiction, the fan fiction of the fan fiction. Everything, anything and everything you can about imagine, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about graphic novels. We're going to talk about TV show adaptations from novels, movie adaptations, and what makes a good romance novel or what makes a good romance. What is romance? You should answer that question. What is romance? Obviously, it's different to everybody. Other questions is, is it lust? Is it love? Does it matter? It's not bad if it's one or the other. It's not bad if it's both. Another question is, does the princess always need to be saved by a prince? Well, I can answer that. No, she doesn't. Um, we're also maybe going to be talking about, of course, you know, some young adult books. That'll be fun. Um, before I get into the first series, I will introduce myself. My name is Melissa. I am wife to Patrick mother to twin boys and mother to a six month old chubby baby boy he's so chubby they just love him um for new parents out there new grandparents new guardians uh, if you haven't don't forget to sign your children up for the dolly parton imagination library Everything is free. The sign-up is free. The books are free. Free, 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 free. Uh, it's up from newborn to, I believe, five years old or first grade. Um, I will say this. Anybody out there who has multiples, you will get the same book. And... Which isn't a bad thing, but that's just a little warning. There's my PSA for right now. Anyways, I thought I would kick off the first episode by talking about a romance genre that I did not know existed. Didn't know I was going to be obsessed with it until three years ago three or four years ago, four years ago now. That is Scottish Highland time travel. Outlander, Jamie Fraser, Screaming Stones, Highlanders, Kilts, Lairds. I love a good Laird. My allergies are in full kick right now so my Scottish is a little meh but laird laird just love it um 
Another reason why I started this podcast was because my husband was sick and tired of me talking about lairds and kilts. He is not Scottish. I am Scottish and proud of it. And he just, he goes, you know, I think other people would be more interested in hearing about this. He goes, I love you, but I just, I just, I can't. Which is understandable. Some things he can. This, he's just like, nope, it's weird. It's it's weird. Which I'm like, eh, okay. To each their own. <laughs> you you also watch golf videos, so there's that. Which is weird. Yes, I know golfing is Scottish. Um, but I'm not talking about Outlander today. We will talk about Outlander because I have lots of thoughts and feelings and I am sure you have lots of thoughts and feelings and I want to hear those thoughts and feelings. Um, but today we're going to talk about a book series that I kind of stumbled upon in the Kindle store and it is called Highlander's Time. It's a trilogy. It doesn't say trilogy in the title, which I think it should. Maybe it does. Um, yeah, Highlander's Time Trilogy, I believe, is the name of the series. Anyways, author is Blanche Debney. Debney. Blanche, like from Golden Girls. And like I said, there's three books. It is free for Kindle Unlimited, $2.99 each. There is no book bundle, so you can't save just a little, you know, three cents or whatever. And if you subscribe to the author's email, um, you get bonus materials, you get an extra epilogue, you get an extra little short story, it's book 1.5, so it goes in between book 1 and 2. Um, main thing for this series, read them in order. Get through the second one. If you can push through the second book, you will enjoy the third book. Um, obviously start with book 1. And if you only wanted to read one, just read book one. Except I did find book three very enjoyable too. I accidentally read book three first and then I figured out um, that wasn't the first book. And then I went back and read book one and then book two. And that was fine. I mean, some things make a little bit more sense if you read them obviously in order but you know if you read the third one first it's not gonna be the end of the world it's not gonna be the end of the world if you read them out of order let's just say that um but i would highly recommend starting with book one it's very good um so book one is held by the highlander it's 170 pages you can read it in a day I read it in a day with many child, child interruptions, making lunch, throwing away that lunch, um, because, you know, I didn't get the memo that my children no longer like chicken nuggets. So, yeah. So, just to give you a quick little summary, I'm not going to try to get too much but I might give away some things I'll try not to give away huge major things I will say there's spoilers um and there's a few twists in this book um there are spoilers in the second one but no there's kind of a few twists in this one so Beth Douglas She's our main girl. She's a second year architect student. Her mother's sick. 
So she was a very nice daughter and paid for this trip for her and her mom to go to Scotland to see castle, this castle and hall that belongs to Andrew McTire that her mom's kind of obsessed with or knows a lot about and right away like we're talking like page three she time travels um which is really cool i appreciate that that it's not like four chapters in and then she time travels and you know we get two pages and that's it um so she time travels right away She's also very much right away accused of setting the hall that she was in on fire because it is, in fact, on fire, which is not, you know, that's not creepy at all that you just came through something and now all of a sudden it's on fire. Um, so she is right away accused of being a traitor and burning the hall down and she's like, what are you talking about? And lo and behold, she's talking to the Laird, Andrew McTire. McTire? Um, so he takes her back to his castle. She realizes, like, you're not an actor. Um, my mom hasn't hired you to, like, kidnap me and do like a reenactment thing like she thinks it does but you know makes sense so which i'm like eh, that's a little extreme for a mom but just because i know my mom would never do that because it would just be awkward um but she realizes that she's not in 2018 when she's when these books were written she is in fact back in 1190 so 12th century Scotland, terrifying, 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 terrifying time to be in the Highlands. Um, just because Scotland at that point is not quite their independent country. They're still ruled by the English. The English very much hate the Scottish. Um, they're very much oppressed by the English and all the clans should be joining together to fight against the English, but they are in fact, every clan is like at war with each other, which I'm just like, come on guys, get it together. But you know, it was 800 years ago, I should get over it, right? Right. <sighs> so, Andrew leaves her at the castle in a tower. She realizes it's crumbling to the ground. And she's kind of doing the math in her head. And she goes, she's like, this doesn't add up. This is a semi-new castle. This shouldn't be falling down. And she befriends... Andrew's like right hand man Rory which I'm just like Doctor Who reference maybe I, I could be wrong but anybody Doctor Who, Who fan kind of know what I'm talking about yeah you know who I'm talking about and she's like um can I get a different tower prison please because this room is going to fall apart and he's like what are you talking about and she like Point out everything that's going to happen. And he's like, you know, come with me. I'm going to take you on a tour of the whole castle. And you're going to tell me everything that's wrong. And we're going to start fixing it. And she's like, okay. Like, just kind of, all right. That works. Um, so while that is happening, Andrew has taken some men to another clan. And... He believes, because he saw their tartan, um, 
run away with torches after burning, you know, his hall down. And he's like, yo, homies, why are you trying to kill me? And he, the laird for them, for that clan is like, don't know what you're talking about. And like, honestly, like doesn't, like I'm not doing a very good job. He, the laird, like it's really convincing that he actually has no clue what he's talking about. So Andrew's like, well, someone's trying to kill me, you know, like just stay in. And then Laird's like, all right, well, you need to leave before, you know, this gets ugly. And he's like, okay, just, you know, letting you know, bro. So he leaves and he comes back and it doesn't really say how long, but I'm guessing it's probably a one, two day journey between each, um, you know, territory. I could be wrong. It could be that night. The next, I don't know. It doesn't really say. But when he comes back, his castle is pretty much being taken apart. <laughs> and he's like, what's going on? And... His right-hand man is like, well, you know, this is what, you know, she's pretty much a master builder. We're going to listen to her. You're going to just shut up and let us do this. And he's like, all right, whatever. So he has this ritual that we find out that anytime he after he patrols which we know I don't know if you know but if you've read enough historical type things you know that patrolling the property and all that isn't just like a few hours here and there like it can take days or weeks to kind of scope out what's on their land so anytime he does this and he comes back, he always goes swimming. And then, so he comes back from this other clan and patrolling, comes back, and he takes Beth swimming. And you think, oh, you know, this is it. You know, if it were a movie, it'd be the orchestra music is starting to get, you know, more robust or whatever. But... Nope, they get ambushed. Um, of course, when they're in the water or something like that. Um, and she's freaking out because she is seeing all this. She's seeing this one guy against many more men. And he's kind of like, I don't know if he kills anybody. That was really uncertain. I think he might kill have killed one but he injures a lot of people and there's a lot of blood and I mean can't say for certain but I have one have never seen a whole lot of medieval sword fighting in real life that's not at a renaissance fair so she's like get me home like nope I'm done I'm gonna leave you the plans to what you need to do to rebuild your castle so it's gonna not fall down come winter time i want to go home right now and he's like no that's okay no and she's like do you mean no so he's like no you need to stay here because i still kind of don't trust you which is a lie he does trust her. He just doesn't want her to go because he's starting to have feelings for her. And she was kind of having feelings for him. And then she was like, nope, this is too violent. I need to go home. My mom is sick. Oh, and the, also she's, that's all she kind of says is my mom is sick. I need to go home. Um, or, but she doesn't actually tell him till I think up to that point why she wants to go home. And, and then it's, well, my mom is sick. I need to go. I need to go be with her. And he can empathize with that because his mother, his own mother died recently, semi-recently. And 
so he's like yeah i get it you know my mom died i saw that it was terrible and but then he he goes again and he goes back to the clan and is like why are you trying to kill me but while that is happening he like tells everybody in the castle he goes she's not leaving which is really super selfish whatever um so somebody is like i'll take you back to the hall and you can go back home and one of the people who take her back was one of these hired guys by the person who's trying to kill him trying to kill Andrew so she kind of gets held hostage for a while and all that anyways long story short she stays the person who is trying to kill him confesses um it's I thought it was going to have more of a build to it, but then it just kind of built, and then it was just like, okay, that's it. The cool thing is, is that her mom does time travel, and we find this out. Um, you will find this out if you subscribe to the author's email list. I personally, I think I've only received the one email that was like, here's the link to this. Um, which is nice. I mean, it's not a whole bombarding you with a lot of stuff. Um, because you know how that can get. Anyways, her mom comes through the same way she does pretty much right after she time travels. They just get separated. Um, her mom is no longer sick in this time period, which is really nice and cool. Then, um, you know, the predictable ending of they get married. And by the end of the epilogue, she has given birth to a child. You know, for the story, I would give it a three out of five stars. The romance, there was one sex scene before they were married, I think. Maybe. No, I can't remember. But there is one sex scene. It is very PG-13. Um, I would be comfortable with my children being 16 years old or older reading that part. Like, if it were a movie, 16 and older. Um, it's a very, very clean romance. A few twists. Easy to read. Um, if you like this genre and you're not... And you like the nice, clean romance books... I would recommend this one. Um, overall, I would give it a 3 out of 5 stars just because it does, the story does just kind of drop in some places. Um, I feel like the character development though was very nice and she's not so whiny. And they don't fall in love within two seconds. You know, I think, you know, is it love? Is it lust? I think it was lust at first, and you can definitely tell that. I think that when she dis decides to stay, you know, he has kind of like, yeah, you know what? She's this fierce, independent female. And I like that. And he doesn't try to change that. So. 
on to book two, which I'm dreading. This was not a good book. Um, I am just saying that. I, I don't know. I don't want to give a bad review, but I will just, I was not very happy with this one. And this is the longest one. It is 232 pages, and it felt like forever. Um, first thing, though, there are some triggers in this book with talk of domestic abuse, past domestic abuse, victim blaming by the abuser, um... It plays a weird part in the actual story. It's not just one of those weird character details that like, yeah, okay, you didn't really need to add that in there type of deal. Um, but I just wanted to say that first because, um, you know, if that is something that is very triggering to you or to anybody that is around you right now, you know, feel free to skip ahead. You're not going to miss much. This book was weird and disappointing because the first one was really good. So, let's start. Carrie Sutherland um, just escaped a very physically, verbal, emotional relationship. She goes back home. Her mom pays for her trip to go to Scotland. Um, just to get away, be by herself. Somehow her ex gets a hold of this information, um, follows her there. She has this inkling that someone is following her um, so he shows up and she's like up this tower looking at this castle. It's not the same one. And he, they get in, not an argument because that's not the right word. He's very, very possessive of her and is like, no, you're coming with me. And he like lunges for her and she falls out of a window in this tower. And that's how she time travels. So again, the time traveling is happening right away, which I very much appreciate. The weirdest thing is when she falls through time, it ends back in 1190. All three of these books are taking pretty much place at the exact same time. Let me just put that little note in there. The weirdest thing is when she travels through time, ends back in 1190, she is completely naked. That's not a spoiler. That's just weird. And we didn't need that. I'm sorry. It has nothing to do with it. Um... It's just weird. I kind of get it, but I don't because, you know, if we are talking about time travel, and I mean, we, we could talk about time travel. I have thoughts uh, that why, if the first book, and I'm just going to say this too, and in the third book, both women have their clothes on from 2018 she does not and it's not like she's wearing something weird or out of the ordinary I think she's just wearing she was just wearing like jeans and a shirt you know and all of a sudden she's naked I don't get it if someone can explain it to me please explain it to me so <sighs> it's just weird. So, um, so like I said, she's back in 1190, Scotland, 
Um, and then we jump to <clears throat> her love interest. And Callum McCloyd, McLeod, 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 M A C, capital C, L E O D. is the son of the laird. He is supposed to marry a rival clan's daughter. Obviously he doesn't want to because it's a rival. Um his that his clan and that clan have pretty much they've been rivals since dawn of time. He also is a warrior and fully believes that um, that is how he is supposed to die in battle and he does not want to leave anybody behind grieving for him, mourning him. I get that. My husband was a Marine before he had to get medically discharged and it's still obviously not very happy about that. Um, Like, if you've met any Marine who had to get, retire, or had to retire early, or against their will, <laughs> um, which is kind of all of them, um, you get it. My dad was in the Air Force for 22 years, and be happier to retire <laughs> so I mean I get it there's you know different you know he's Callum is a warrior that's his job that's his purpose kudos to him I also very much admire that that he's just like no I'm not getting attached I'm not marrying like I will probably die before I even become Laird there is no reason for that. Um, which I'm like, there's lots of reasons you could get married. Because then you could have, you know, a legitimate heir to your clan. And then your clan would still be set to go. But that's my opinion. Obviously, he didn't hear me. Um... So, he's supposed to marry. He doesn't want to marry um, this other girl. Carrie shows up. She is knocked unconscious for about a week. Um, which is terrifying. Um, everybody thinks that she is this other girl. Um, I think her name is Nessie. Her name was mentioned maybe like three times in the entire book. Um, he pretty much like barges in after coming back um, from a patrol into her room. And he's like, I'm not marrying you. And she's like, that's cool. I don't want to marry you either. Question mark. Like, who the fuck are you? You know, and she's... <laughs> she does say something really funny. She's like, aren't you even going to ask my name? And that just like pisses him off. And he just, Wah. she's like, good for you. And she's just like, I don't want to marry you either. Maybe she asked my name first. Um, so they're kind of forced to go spend a little bit of time together from Calm's father and she confesses to him that she's not this chick she's like I'm not this person you think I am my name is Carrie I'm from the future and he's like yeah I 100% believe that and she's like really he's like yeah I'm we're gonna go talk to this witch and he is not calling her a witch the witch is calling herself a witch um which is very very brave for you know, 12th century Scotland. But they're also in a weird time where they're... They're Christians 95% of the time, but they still have their Druids 
and their witches and their oracles and they still kind of semi pray to the old gods which kudos to them um so the witch tells carrie you know if you stay here like this is what i see if you stay here something dark is going to happen but then you're going to be happy like this darkness thing is going to go away and then you're going to live happily ever after and she's like and if you go she go she's like if you go back she's like i can't i can't see anything which is a little ominous like if someone tells you that they can't see what is going to happen to you if you go back home wouldn't you just be like okay well i guess i'm staying then um and the, and the witch also shows up in the first book. Um, I just didn't write her name down. It starts with an F. I know that. So, this is where this book gets weird. Er. It jumps back to the future with her ex getting approached by two men in black who are like, you need, this is what happened to Carrie. She jumped back, she got pulled back into time and she is like scheduled to come back into the future at this location at this time. And you need to be there and make sure she stays here for the future and of history. And the guy being so possessive of her is like, all right. I mean, he's just kind of like, no, that's complete bullshit. And then the, they mentioned something about Call, Call, Callum and he's like, okay, nope, I'm one. Like, she's been talking about this guy and his stupid castle and I'm sick of it. And okay, I'll go. So the place that she is supposed to go back and she has decided that, you know, whatever, I will go back home. I need to deal with my ex, which I'm like, no, you don't need to deal with your ex. Like that is not your responsibility. Um, and she's like, you know, whatever. So she and Callum, Callum need to go back to none other than Andrew McTyre's from the first book, The Hall. Obviously, The Hall hasn't been burnt down yet. So, this is actually happening before Beth comes or what have you um because remember it got burnt down she rebuilt it or had people rebuild it but um so he's like well i can't really take you i can take you this far because you know that's another clan's land and i don't want to be seen there and she's like okay and all the while, he's thinking, I don't want you to go. He's grown to like her. And he's just like, yeah, she's nice company. Whatever. And then she's kind of like, well, he's cute. He's got a cute butt. He's, she's never seen his butt. Just putting that out there. This book is very G. Very G. Um, like, I could read it out loud to my children. They're two. They wouldn't understand it anyways. Um... So the ex is sitting in this room that she's supposed to come through. Now, for some reason, he can see through the door into the past, like it's a portal, and he can see Carrie in this Callum. And she's like walking towards the hall and she walks in and then she stops and then she turns around she goes back to him and she's like no i 
I want to stay. If you'll help me fight whatever dark thing is supposed to be coming. And he's like, duh. Like, yes, I will. Um, so you think, okay, whatever, that solves that. Well, the men in black show up again. Um, and they tell her ex, nope, you, like, this, you failed. So, the ex goes through the portal to end up in the other side, to 1190. And he tracks them down. And he tells Caleb, like, they're separated in, like, an inn. And he tells Caleb, um, yo, like, she's my wife. She's kind of crazy. She talks about how she's in the future all the time. Um, you know, I need to take her home, have her rest, you know, and all that. And for some reason, Caleb, like, believes him, even though Carrie has told her told him everything she the nice thing the author does not tell us everything she just tells us that Carrie has told him everything in detail about all the abuse all the physical abuse the verbal abuse the emotional abuse everything um so he's like well that doesn't sound right but okay and then he just leaves. <sighs> so this is dumb. And then he goes up to Carrie and finds Carrie and is like, oh yeah, he left. He thinks you're ugly and fat. And she like believes him, of course. And they leave and he's like, see, here's a note that proves it. And I'm just like, that doesn't prove anything, but okay. Um, and then he, the ex, leaves a note in the bedroom of this inn. And it basically says, like, I don't want you anymore. And they both, both these notes, like, say, I don't want you anymore. Which is too bad. But, you know, that's just how it goes. Long story short, because I have dragged this out far too long than I wanted to for this book. The ex doesn't die. He gets injured. They're, they stay in 1190. There's maybe two kisses in this book. It's very dumb. It's not dumb. It's very odd. Um, the author in the first book, for the first book, did a very nice job writing all the, how the Scottish dialect goes. And then she does the same for this book, but then it drops off, and then it kind of picks up, and then it drops off. And it's very weird. So, that's how that goes. Um, you know, she ends up staying... And they get married. It's a very long story to get to the, that conclusion. I was disappointed because I thought the men in black thing was going to pan out better. Or at least have it in all three books. And it doesn't. Um, she definitely could have done a better job trying to incorporate something like that into it but you know it's just that's where it's at so on to book three now this is the first one i read i accidentally read book three first um outlaw highlander and this one is 152 pages so it is the shortest of the books um So right right away, our main character is Lindsay Macmillan. She's a cafe waitress um, with an ill mom. Can't tell if her mom is ill. Seems that way, but there's no 
you know, reassuring. The mom is sort of obsessed with the Sinclair clan and she bought their house and the house is from, you know, the 12th century, which I'm just like, you know, I get. Well, the first house my husband and I bought, um, a few, you know, half year before, six months before we were married, we bought our first house and it is a hundred year old was farmhouse. And it had, I tore up all the carpet and there's all the original flooring. The people before us glued the carpet to the floor. Oh, and they did it in the 70s too. Um, so we had multiple, I think we had like three people come and look at our floor because we really wanted to restore this house, like completely kind of restore it. Even though we found out or we came to the conclusion that our kitchen and the adjoining upstairs bedroom that like is above the kitchen were added on later. Um, yeah, that'd be like $15,000 to restore this room. And it's not a very big room. Um, so we didn't do that. Um, and then we had children very, very fast right after we got married, which was a semi oops. So I, I understand wanting to buy something old and fix it up when you're obsessed with it. Cause I think we seriously looked at this one house. And I was like, we need to buy this house. And my husband's like, I want to make you happy. And you're kind of crazy. So we will buy this house. And we didn't restore it the way we wanted to. Or really at all. Um, another little PSA. Don't buy a fixer upper and then have children either fix it up and then have children or buy a fixer upper when your children move away. But by then I'm sure you'll be way too tired to do anything. So getting back to our story. Her mom buys this house and it is falling to the ground pretty much. But her mom is convinced that, according to all these legends, that there's this, like, stone or ruby or something like that hidden in this house. And that if she can find it, she can sell it and they can, you know, pay for the house to be fully restored. Um, and the book is a... So, and, yeah, there's this book about Tavish St. Clair who was exiled or banished from his clan. It's not the Sinclair clan. Um, I didn't write the clan's name down. But he isn't a laird. He was like a laird in waiting. Um, I guess the laird of his clan didn't have any offspring. Um, or legitimate offspring but he was like nope I'm training you to be Laird and when I die you're gonna be Laird like everybody knows this and everybody wants him to be Laird um which is cool but then an accident happens and a princess dies a princess from Norway dies and it's blamed on him, so he gets banished. His father gets imprisoned. Um, so when Lindsay, she goes to Scotland on this trip, her mom won or something like that, or had paid for, that she was gonna take, and she's told Lindsay, no, you go. Um, and so she gets in this like boat, I don't know, lock. And then all of a sudden there's mist and that's how she time travels. It's through the mist, which I love a good mist when there's it's mist and it time travels. Um, 
but her boat crashes and Tavish rescues her. So for the time period, it's still, I'm assuming, 1190, but from when Tavish was exiled, it is now 10 years later after he has been exiled is where this particular part of the story picks up. So he kind of believes, Lindsay, that she's from the future. Um, and he's like, yeah, I, I know how you can get back, but I also need you to help me. And again, it's all on Andrew McTire's land, which he's like, you know, can't really go on because I'm from a different clan. I'm also an outlaw. So like, you know, I have to stay in my little hut here. And she has to go get this stone from the McTire's place um, that actually belongs to his clan. And if he gets this, then he can pretty much um, come back to his clan. But only somebody or somebody from the future or who didn't belong could only like get this stone. And she actually, so she's like, yeah, let's do it. Whatever. I'll help you. You help me. Um, like, I need to get home. My mom's gonna, we're gonna be like evicted from this house because my mom spent all our money on it. Um, and she's like, but I need you to tell me where you hide, you know, where you hit this stone so that, you know, I can go back and find it. You know, you help me, I help you, all is good. Um, so she's retrieving the stone. And there's another recurring, two recurring characters. She actually runs into Andrew McTire. And he like completely is like, yeah, I know you're from the future. And she's like, sweet, give me the stone. He's like, here you go. She's like, sweet. <sighs> so they go to the Sinclair house and he hides the stone. Um, and they're all set to, you know, kind of part ways. And of course they don't. But Lindsay's able to, like, when she sleeps, she's able to kind of, like, dream travel and, like, see her mom. And she figures out a way to, like, get the message to, hey, mom, the stone is here. And, yeah. Long story short, she stays in 1190. So right now we have three girls, three women, time traveling back to 1190, which I'm like, no, <laughs> but okay, that's weird. And it all like, it all has to do with Andrew McTire's like land, which, you know, I'll get to in a second. Um, so they go back to the clan. He's he's able to come back to the clan. Um, in the epilogue, he's pretty much Laird. I believe he is Laird. And they're married and she's pregnant. And that's how it ends. You know, I would give... This one, two and a half, three stars. It was very good. She's very feisty. He's very feisty. Um, a lot better than book two. So, my recommendation is if you have Kindle Unlimited, and this is a genre you really enjoy, I would read it. If you don't have Kindle Unlimited, you're kind of interested in it, I would get the book one and two. You could really do without book, or I would get book one and book three. I would not waste your money on book two. 
Um, I really wouldn't. And I don't really like saying that. Um, because I'm one of those people that, like, if I start a series, I, like, have to read the everything. Which is how I ended up reading all the Twilights and almost all of Fifty Shades of Grey. Which we will talk about. We will... Oh... We will talk about those books. Um, you know, I I went into these books with a little higher expectation than I thought. Shame on me for that. Um, so, the author has written nine books of the same category. There's two more trilogies, um, so there's three trilogies all together. Um, I quickly read Highlander's Voyage, which is the first book of her medieval Highlander trilogy. Um, you know, it was... I might read the other one too because it was a lot more, I felt more authentic, which I don't know what that really means right now, but I just felt more authentic to an actual like romance novel. Um, very PG-13, so I might read the other two quickly. And then I'll let you know if I do. Um, that one has a actual few sex scenes. Like PG-13 sex scenes. We're not talking rated R. Um, and there is a reoccurring character. Um, a druid character in that book as well. Which is very cool. That if that's how those books go because the medieval highlander trilogy it technically i think comes before the highlander's time trilogy and then i didn't write down the other one um so if it comes before then sweet but for the overall series as a series, I would give it two and a half stars out of five. There, I know, I know, there are plenty of other Scottish time traveling books. That's not Highlander. Um, but, or Outlander. This is Highlander. Anyways, thanks for listening. Episode 1. Chapter 1. Let's call these chapters. Chapter 1 is done. Um, please like, subscribe to the podcast. Our Facebook page, Instagram is all paperback romance book club. Um, for Instagram, that's all one word. You can email me at paperbackromancebookclub at gmail.com if you have any suggestions for books, authors, genres, topics, um, your favorite quotes, your favorite authors, um, anything interesting that you have to say about this genre I would like to get enough emails that I could you know we can talk about it I am going to um, set up a few polls on the Facebook page so go find us my logo is it's pink with a white like open book kind of looks like a heart um, Go find your library. Go get a library card. 
donate to your library. And I hope you tune in to the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.